Our next presentation this morning will focus on modifiable risk factors, changes you can make today to help you remain healthy and safe long into your retirement. Dr. Stephanos Kales is a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and professor and director of the Occupational Medicine Residency at the Harvard School of Public Health. He is also the chief of occupational and environmental medicine and the medical director for employee health and industrial medicine at the Cambridge Health Alliance, that is a Harvard-affiliated hospital system. His group has provided seminal contributions in clinical epidemiology of cardiovascular events in firefighters, including the first definitive statistical association of strenuous job tasks and on-duty cardiovascular deaths. Please welcome Dr. Stefanos Kaos. Good morning. I really want to thank Pat for that extremely generous uh, introduction, and I want to thank you for the invitation to be here. It's an honor. And uh, I'm truly humbled just hearing the stories of everything that all of you do every day in and out to protect and save lives. So Pat asked me to speak about modifiable risk factors. What I really want to talk to you about is protecting yourself. And I, I like the term that Pat actually came up with, which is more firefighter oriented, is a lifestyle countermeasure, things you can do to protect yourself. You've heard at length yesterday, also this morning, and many of your other meetings, beyond the acute traumatic dangers that firefighters face every day, you face long-term chronic health issues. Those include the occupational hazards of occupational cancer, occupational cardiovascular disease, and the subsequent sequelae including depression, PTSD, suicide, et cetera, substance abuse, the behavioral health issues, the burnout, et cetera. The good news is there are these operational lifestyle countermeasures that firefighters can take to minimize your risks of, yes, cancer, yes, heart disease, and yes, behavioral health issues. This is in no way to minimize the occupational hazards and to say, well, it's all what you do and it's, it's just your own fault. No, these are things within your reach that you can do to protect yourself. And as Pat said, the benefits can extend throughout your career on into retirement. Let's talk about healthier weights. Unfortunately, 33 to 40% of the North American Fire Service is obese. Now weight, in no way is simply a choice. There are many other factors in there that are genetic, they're familial, and everything else. But we're gonna recognize, as you see through the presentation, things that you do in terms of diet, exercise, and sleep, they can profoundly affect your weight, and we can all agree on that. Many of the adverse effects of obesity you're already aware of. Hypertension, metabolic syndrome, that's a precursor of diabetes and heart disease. Diabetes itself the risk is increased. Obstructive sleep apnea, the risk is markedly increased. And the risk for cardiovascular disease go up, both enlargement of the heart as well as coronary heart disease, blockages of the coronary arteries. These are the two pathologic phenomena that we most commonly identify in sudden cardiac death in firefighters. Among firefighters dying of sudden cardiac death on duty, 75 to 80% have both of these conditions underlying and they're most often associated with obesity together. But did you know that obesity increases cancer risk? Dr. Siegel yesterday, in speaking to you about firefighter cancer, spoke to you about IARC, the International Agency for Research on Cancer. Well, they've also studied obesity as a risk for cancer, and as you see here, many of the same cancers that are occupational cancers of firefighting are also increased markedly 30 to 80 percent by obesity. So this is something you can do about your cancer risk. Now one of the ways you can affect your weight is through a healthier diet. 
you are what you eat. I think we all recognize that the breakfast on the left is a lot healthier than the breakfast on the right. And you probably also recognize that the breakfast on the right is the one that was served at a firefighter health meeting. That's right. Now, the reason I kept that picture is because it's an iconic representation of everything in red on this slide. Laden with saturated and trans fat, processed added sugars, it's highly refined and highly processed. Fresh from the factory to your mouth. Now, what do you need to do on the other side? If that's what you need to avoid, you need to eat more plant-based foods, but not just plant-based foods, so vegetables, fruits, beans, nuts, etc. but fish and lean proteins, poultry. When you can, choose the white protein over the red protein. Not to say you shouldn't eat red meat at all, just moderate it. And fats are not bad, it's the kind of fat. So you avoid trans fats and saturated fats, but you need healthy fats like olive oil and avocado and fish oils. And yes, drink water, not energy drinks and not soft drinks. The most evidence-based and scientifically proven way to get everything that was shown on the last slide is a dietary pattern called the Mediterranean diet. This has been practiced for thousands of years around the Mediterranean basin. The essential part of it is extra virgin olive oil, plant-based, but meats, fish, wine in moderation. And scientists have studied this in detail over the last 70 years. And as you see in this slide, the experts both in the US government as well as a consensus panel for this uh, Best Diets Reports, which comes out every year, you can see across the board, they've given this diet the number one rating. And one of the reasons is it's not just a diet, it's a lifestyle, it's a way of eating, and it's easy to follow. You can see easiest to follow. We can all understand that. What are some of the health benefits? We said the three major chronic hazards that firefighters face are cancer, cardiovascular disease, and behavioral health issues. We see this diet markedly reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, yes, many of the same cancers that are increased by firefighting and increased by obesity are reduced by the healthy diet. We see reductions in depression, better recovery from other behavioral health issues, decreased risks of metabolic syndrome, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, cognitive decline, otherwise the, the precursors of Alzheimer's. And if you're not impressed by avoiding chronic disease and living longer, well, yes, you can sleep better and you can have better sex. So if you don't care about disease or living longer, you might care about that. Now, it's hard to explain all that to you in 15 minutes, so we've developed a website that was associated with a FEMA-associated study. It's called Survival Mediterranean Style Feeding America's Bravest. All the resources are there, including, you know, got to make it easy, so five simple steps, which are uh, shown here. Physical fitness, also key. What you put into your body, very important, but how you maintain your body, extremely important. And as you see in this, all the pictures here, it's not just about going to the gym. It can be functional things. It can even be the yard work, but staying and remaining active, staying and remaining active, that's the key. Most of you are familiar with the recommendations for physical activity, at least 150 minutes a week of moderate aerobic exercise, or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic exercise, or some combination of those two. In concert with that, you should practice strength and resistance training at least two, two to three times a week to complement the aerobic training. The benefits of physical fitness. These mirror those of the healthy diet. But it's not just, oh, Chinese uh, menu option A or option B, no. These two things work together additively and synergistically. So if you're putting the right fuel in your body, and you're maintaining your body in the right way, you're gonna get added benefits, but you, again, you can see cancer, cardiovascular disease, behavioral health issues, living longer, avoiding other chronic diseases, 
It's all there in the package. Now, you know, you've probably heard of uh, runner's high and exercising re releases those endogenous endorphins or the endogenous opioid compounds. But you can see here in this slide, it's not just running or vigorous exercise, but simply taking a walk. Look how this, this is a real brain scan of a person. The brain has lit up with these endorphins just after a 20 minute walk. So perhaps when you have a break today, go outside, take a walk, make yourself feel better, but you get the idea. Now, Pat also wanted me to address sleep deprivation. This is a big problem because firefighters work in shifts. Firefighting, obviously, you have to cover the public 24 hours a day. So there's no way around that. In some ways, it's going to be a fact of the game. But there are things you can do, like naps and other things, to protect yourself. There's also, we have to overcome the mentality or the culture that, you know, sleep is just for weak people or sleep, sleep is for sissies. No. Sleep is an essential physiologic function. It's necessary for survival. If you take an animal and you do not let it sleep, it will die. Sleep is necessary for survival. We talked a lot about PTSD, behavioral health issues, other things. You heard from your colleagues. They said, if I can't sleep, I can't recover. Sleep is necessary for your energy and your recovery. It's necessary for your mental health your emotional function, but also your neurologic, cardiovascular, and metabolic function. Again, we live in a 24-7, 365 society, and you see here that sleep, short sleep is in, it's epidemic, it's epidemic. What you see here is, you see the whole world in one picture from space, and across every single time zone, how is it that the lights are on all over the world all at the same time because people are up. Doesn't matter if it's daylight or night, people, people are up. So this is endemic and there's a lot of things that are both voluntary and involuntary that lead to this. What are the consequences of sleep deprivation or short sleep, which is defined as less than or equal to six hours a night? Increased risk of obesity, increased risk of diabetes mellitus, increased risk of heart disease, increased risk of immunosuppression, which means increased cancer risk and increased infectious disease risk, impaired thinking, and yes, shortened lifespan, increased mortality. We also talked about burnout and PTSD, and yes, short sleep increases the risk of burnout and it impairs the recovery from many different physical and behavioral conditions. Adequate sleep time. What can you do to improve it? You need to prioritize sleep. Sleep is always our last thought. You know, I'll do everything else and then I'll sleep when I'm done. You gotta make sleep a priority. Set aside adequate time for sleep. And if you don't have that consolidated sleep overnight, you need to schedule time for naps. You need to steal time for naps. And we need to say to people, Taking a nap is okay. There's nothing wrong with taking, that is a, both as a strategic before sh starting, let's say a shift, or as a recovery. Naps are, are good for you. Exercise and diet that we talked about already, the better you eat, the more you exercise, but not too close to bedtime, the better you sleep. Using caffeine judiciously, exposing yourself to light, at the right times during the daytime, but not looking at your phone in the middle of the night. And yes, you have to treat the underlying sleep disorders, whether they're obstructive sleep apnea or whether it's the nightmares from PTSD. If you don't get the right treatment from the right experts, you're not gonna sleep and you're not gonna recover. So, in summary, Firefighting is a dangerous job and you face numerous occupational hazards. And in no way are we minimizing those hazards, but the good news is there are lifestyle choices or countermeasures that you can take to decrease the risks of cancer, cardiovascular disease, and behavioral health issues. Those include healthier eating, maintaining a healthier weight, physical fitness, 
and yes, getting adequate sleep. It's often said that firefighters take great care of their equipment and the vehicles in a fire station. It's time for you to recognize you in this room, you are the most important equipment. You are the human capital of the fire service. It's time for you as the leaders in health and safety to go back to your departments and lead the charge for people to take care of themselves. You need to take care of yourselves first. Uh, we've covered a lot. There's a lot to say. You can't cover all the modifiable risk factors in 15 minutes, but you can visit the website Feeding America's Bravest. There are numerous resources there, both for recipes, diet, physical fitness, sleep, et cetera. Again, I thank you for your attention, and I thank you for your service. It was my honor to be here. Thank you.